Hi, my name is Daniel and today I will talk about Community Toolkit and the Camera View for .NET MAUI, of course. So, Camera View is a control that are included in the .NET MAUI Community Toolkit. As you can hear, it's a community project. It's not a Microsoft project, but I know there are Microsoft people uh, working with the project, but they are not doing that on their work time. Because often I see comments, oh, why don't Microsoft care about this? Why don't Microsoft fix this? If you go to GitHub and read issues. And that's because it's not a Microsoft project. It's important to remember that. So, camera view is something that you can use if you want to use um, the camera inside of the app and you want to write your own controls, your own layers on top of the camera view. You can of course use what built in in .NET MAUI to take photos and videos, but then you cannot modify the UI. It is a platform specific way for using the camera. So in this video, I will show you how you can customize that experience using the camera view from Community Toolkit. So first dive so first, let's dive into the documentation. This is actually on learn.microsoft.com and that's maybe a reason why people think this is a Microsoft project because you find the documentation here. But that's not, not the case, but it's an easy way to find the documentation. So camera view, we have some platform specific initiation we need to do. So for Android, we need to set up these permissions in the manifest file for iOS you need to add uh, NS camera user descriptions with info P list. The same for Mac Catalyst. For Windows, you don't have to do anything specific. And for Tyson, it's not currently supported. But we will not focus on the documentation today. I will show you my small demo app that I have built for the purpose to demonstrate this. So let's open Visual Studio Code instead. So here we have my main page in the small app uh, where we can see I added a few stuff. I added a namespace, of course, so I can use the camera view. And I do that here in a grid. And I will be able to set camera flash mode, uh, different cameras because you can have front camera, back camera, wide camera. I will soon show you more about that. You can have zoom levels. So this is just the basic stuff you need to bind to. Then I do lot of other things in the view model and also in the code behind. Then here I also added some content for previewing the image. When you have taken a photo you want to have a preview. So I show that and then I've added some controls. I have added a rotate button, a capture image button, a flash button and a wide angle button that we can use if that is supported. And here you can see that I inject an eye camera provider that is of the, from the names of community toolkit.maui.core. And to be able to use that, you also need to go to Maui program and you need to add this row, use Maui community toolkit camera. Then we will be able to get all the available cameras. It can be one, it can be two, it can be multiple. And this available cameras collection has also a few properties. In this case, you can see if it's a, the position is front or back. So to be able to see if I can rotate the camera, if I can switch from back camera to front camera, I need to check if there are a front camera available in this collection of cameras. And if it is, I set the variable can rotate the camera. Then I also have done some bindings to not bindings in the Maui way, but I have added a few commands, a few actions in my view model because this is UI specific things and I don't want to have that in my view model. So set flash mode here is a method here in the, the main page that I want to be able to call from the view model. So and same with rotate camera and toggle wide angle. We'll come closer into these different methods in a minute. And here we have a selected camera. And when I bind that to the camera view, it, it will 
first run the set method. So the actual first camera will be binded to my uh, property like this. And then I can set the value for this field. I can get has flash from is flash supported. I can get the minimum and maximum zoom factors. So I can add a slider for that, for example. Um, in this case, I do it with a slider that you can use for zoom. So we have a slider here and I bind that to a zoom level. And minimum and maximum should of course here be binded to the property in the view model. We should not set them like I did here. So you do like that and then minimum we do the same binding and minimum zoom level and that makes the slider adapt to what we have from the camera i also noticed here in unreal app that i work with that it can be good to limit this especially for ios because uh, it was possible to zoom to very large uh, values and that makes the slider more or less usable. So I think we set uh, maximum to five. So if maximum was higher than five, then we set the value to five. If it was three, we of course used three. So that was zooming. So of course, when we have a camera view, we want to do something with the image. So here we have an event on the camera view called media captured and for that event i have this event handler here in the code behind and from the event arcs we get a stream and i copy that to a memory screen and convert it to a byte array and then i set that in the view model and here that the bytes is a property it's generated by the community tool with MVM. so here we also notify property change for show photo and show camera and that means that this will also trigger a change for those properties. So show photo is true if byte is not null and show camera is bytes is null. And that makes the preview be visible. So we can run this and see how it works for now. So here we have the camera view. Here you can see my controls that I've added. So we can toggle the flash. This, we can take a photo. Uh, you can retake that, so you do it without the flash like this, and we have a pre and we can save it. In this case, the demo app save doesn't do anything, but we can retake again. Then we can click the wide angel button like this, so we switch to the wide angel camera. Uh, right now, I only find a good way to do that on iOS, but I will show you how I did that in a minute, and. Uh, as you can see here, rotate camera is not working. And the reason for that is that I added this code in the constructor here, and here is not the available cameras collection loaded. So we need to move this code. So we copy this, and we instead set it here in selected camera. So when the camera first is initialized for the first time, it will set this can rotate camera. And here we can also add a variable private bool is camera initialized. Oops, we should not do what Codepilot set there because it was a lot of code. So if it's not initialized, uh, we run that one. So we don't need to do that every time. And then we set is camera initialize to true here. So now we can try again. So let's try again and hit the rotate button. And now we hit the breakpoint. So yes, throw it the way. Boom. And here I am with my green screen. So if we take a look what I am doing when I rotate the camera, of course check if I can rotate the camera, but I probably don't need to do that but I want to be safe here. So if selected camera is the first one, the one that we loaded from the beginning, I will se set it to the first front camera. There can be more of them, probably some wide modes there as well, but I think it works well with the first 
one and this will work both on iOS and Android and because it's hard to detect what camera it is on an Android I will show you that soon and if it's not I step back to the first camera but of course of course you can handle that also if you want to so if we take a look at the wide angle I have hard coded in an ID here and I get that ID from when I debugged and I will show you that now so just set the breakpoint, let's sit there, and I will click the white angel button. And here we see that I have a ID for this camera. And if we take a look at selected cameras, we can see here that we have a device ID. We have a name here on iOS. On Android, we will not have names like this. So I can see this is a back camera. And if I go to another back camera, I can see it's an ultra wide camera, a true depth camera, and then I can save those IDs in a variable and I can be able to set that one. And those IDs seem to map also to this device type of AV capture device if you read the documentation, uh, the Apple documentation for this. But for Android, we don't have an ID that we was able to use when we developed this in, for my employee in an app. Uh, so right now we don't support wide angle there, but for some devices we also have seen that um, the zoom level not starting on uh, 1, is starting on like 0.7. And uh, in that case, on those devices we will get a bit of wide angle, but that's not on all the devices, so it's a bit strange there. But for iOS it works well to handle wide angle like this, and that's also the reason I have set um, is visible only on iOS here. Otherwise, if you want to have the wide angel as the platform uh, has it, you can use the, the built-in camera. And in that app we built for my employee, we also have an option. If you user wants to use our camera view or if they want to use the built-in camera. And the, with the built-in camera, you will use the pick uh, or take photo option from uh, uh, that's not not the Maui library, but then you cannot add your own overlays and s stuff like that. Good thing with this is also you can build a better flow for taking multiple images. If you use the built-in one, you can take one image, then you need to trigger it again and again and again. Now you can build an easier flow for that, even if I don't have that in my demo app. But let's say on, when you click click the save button, it will save the image and it will make it possible for you to take the next image and that is not possible with uh, the built-in camera yeah and if we talk about flash we can more or less have uh, three modes so then you can not have it on or off because you can have it on or off or or out of. so i handled that by doing a, a nullable um, bool flash on so uh, then i use that for if it's null, it's out. If it's false, it's off. Otherwise, it's on if it's true. So I also bind the flash icon like this. And with wide icon, we have only wide, wide mode on or off in this case, even if you can add other modes probably for iOS. If you saw what available camera you had, but I have not seen a big difference on them. At least it was hard to see with the eye when I tried it out. If you want to take a look at this code, I also have it on my GitHub and I will add a link to that in the video description. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, please press the thumbs up button and uh, subscribe to my channel if you not already do so. And if you want to support the channel a bit extra, you can go and uh, use the super thanks button or you can buy the t-shirt that my avatar has on the thumbnail that says let's go to Maui. So thank you very much and see you next time. Bye bye.